I flip ahead just for a hot second. Um, this is the same thing that I drew, just without me having to redraw it, right? <sighs> On Monday, we were talking about the electron transport chain, which is the first step of oxidative phosphorylation. Okay, so remember we're in the mitochondria. Okay, so here is our membrane. It stinks. It's not used green. Oh, blue. Blue is better. Okay, and here we have several proteins. I drew them as boxes. Okay, that are going to do our facilitated transport with us. So those are what technically make up the chain. The name is made. Okay, and remember this sets up two different areas, like kitchen, living room. Next we have our mitochondrial matrix and our intermembrane space. Okay, so remember the big key of this first part is to build up that concentration gradient, removing these protons these H pluses against their concentration gradient. Okay, so I've got one down here. I have three up there. Okay, so if I want to move this up into the intermembrane space, I would be moving against my concentration gradient, right? Normally that would cost me ATP. We don't want to spend ATP, we want to make ATP. And so remember the way we want to do this is use our coupons. And our secret goal all along. Okay, so we see here and we're taking those NADHs or the FADH2s. Okay, we just focused on the NADHs a bit more because we've been making them pretty much every step of the way, right? And we're going to break those. It's so like any other catabolic reaction. When you break something, you get a little energy out of it. But this time our energy is, what do we get out of an NADH? What was the whole point? Why are we dragging these things around? What do we get out of them? Electron. Good. Now the blue kind of stinks. Can't seem to win here, can I? All right, so being an electron is important to our story here. A lot of noise is that thing. Because, what color can I even do to not make the ruckus here? When a proton and an electron come together, okay, for our temporary tender date throughout these uh, transport proteins, okay, we have negative charge and a positive charge. Okay, so this is why we were calling our electrons smugglers. Okay, so temporarily we're hiding our protons, right? It allows our proton to sneak through while it's hanging out with that electron. That bad influence. It doesn't have that positive charge, right? Because their charges cancel out. Negative plus positive. Now that it's all alone again. <coughs> because our electron is going to stay here in the electron transport chain. So once our proton passes out and away from the smuggler, the smuggler drops off the goods, it doesn't stay, then it has its positive charge back. Here we go, building up our concentration gradient. Any questions about that part? Remember the last part of this then, as our electron.
electrons carried along. Remember, we don't want to leave electron cells. And while they always serve vital roles, they can help us cheat, and make our muscles twitch, make our hearts beat. And so ions do good things, but they can't stay around forever because they do always do something very active in cells. So we have to get rid of them. Let's remember we're going to steal two of those protons that are already down and around here. And combine them with two electrons. Remember, when you take protons and electrons together, right, we get rid of those charges. Okay, so we get rid of the positive and minus charge, and we're left with just the hydrogen ions which is good. No more muscle snapping. But now we just have extra hydrogen ions floating around, taking up space. So we still do have to get rid of those. And that's where this oxygen comes in. Remember, this step is an aerobic process, meaning we're using oxygen. So we're going to use some of that oxygen, combine it with our two hydrogens, to get ourselves that water. Okay, this is where we ended class on Monday. I don't know what day of the week it is. Any questions about any of this? Good question. Right. Okay. So his question is, when we break down NADH and we get those electrons out, we're left with NAD. What happens to that, right? Okay. So, like most things with the cell, we can recycle that. Okay. So that's going to end up going back around to our earlier stages, and we'll use that to create NADH again. Great question. Anything else before we move forward? Okay, so our big goal here then, remember, is that we've jacked up our intermembrane space with all of these hydrogen ions, right? all of these protons. And that's our big goal, our big finale. Have we made any ATP? Did any ATP come out of this? No, right? So we have to have one more step. No, I went backwards. Don't move. Thank you. Trust me. Okay, so our one more step is the second step of oxidative phosphorylation which I like to call ATP synthase. Okay, literally, the synthesis of ATP. What we've been waiting for this whole time is a promised land. So let's see how this works. So remember, when we left, the electron transport 
short chain, we have this huge pool of protons stuck up in that intermembrane space. That's what we spent the entire electron transport chain doing, right? Was jamming them all up there. Okay. So what we're going to do is let them all come back down their concentration gradient. If we let things come back down their concentration gradient, does this cost anything? No, right? So this is free. In this case, though, it's not going to be just free. And we're going to harness the energy of these things flowing down their concentration gradient. Okay. A lot like harnessing the energy of water coming down a dam. Okay. So we're not just going to let them flow freely through any protein. Okay. We're going to pass them through a specific protein. And we're only going to open one gate. They all have to flow through one dam. And that dam is called ATP synthase. So like when water flows over the dam, and spins electrical turbines, which is how we get a lot of electricity. Okay. When the protons flow through this protein, it also spins a turbine. And that turbine is going to create ATP instead of electricity. Okay, definition makes sense? Then we're going to go look at a drawing, right? Any questions about what's going to happen? Place my word gate here so I have a little bit more space. Alright, so here's my membrane. And I'm not going to show the electron transport chain this time because all I care about, yep, being able to draw appropriately, is one protein this time. ATP synthase. Right, so when we left, remember we already had a bajillion protons sitting up here. And that's what our electron transport chain did. So all that's really going to happen at this stage, which is pretty chill, is I'm going to open the top of that. Okay. Once we open the gate, okay, regular facilitated diffusion is just going to happen, right? These guys want to move down their concentration gradient. They want that elbow room. Okay, so we don't even have to do anything there. They're just going to do that. I need space. Get me away from Gregory. Okay. Like going over a dam, though, as these guys go through here, okay, we're going to spin. 
spins the turbine. Okay. Every time this thing spins, ATP comes out. The other thing this process is called, and you probably see this in your book as well, is chemiosmosis. And so osmosis or diffusion of a chemical. So be aware that you will see both terms, and both are correct. The term chemiosmosis is, in fact, on our visual roadway map, right? Everybody see what's happening here? All right, so this is probably one of the chillest steps we've had, right? There's less that goes into it. We have started with a bunch of protons, and we let them do their own thing, and we let facilitated diffusion happen, boom, ATP. Huzzah! Okay, now the reason this is so important, yeah, that video's not going to play, so I'll post that video online, okay, is we get a lot of ATP this time. Okay, not one or two, okay, but like, 30 to 34 ATP. And so this is why we bother. Because all the other steps that even bothered to give us ATP gave us like two. Okay. Once again, not zero. Prep step gave us zero. Sorry, prep step. Okay. But this gives us a ton. Oh, sorry, go ahead. I'm just, uh, so there's two questions in the chat. One is which term will you use in the osmosis for AP? So I tend to use ATP synthase, but you will see both. And in my study session, I use chemiosmosis. So, don't so even know. better. So you will get both reinforced well. Okay, so the next question is, is there a name for the thing in ATP synthase that spins to produce ATP? The there might be, but I don't actually know it. Um, that's definitely more of a biochemistry thing, so you'd be talking about parts of a protein, and that's definitely not my shtick. Uh, I mean, I don't, I definitely don't know that. So great question, um, but definitely not my wheelhouse. Okay. So, keep in mind as we've done this, we say 30 to 34 ATP, that's per molecule of glucose, right? We started with one glucose, okay? What we got from chemiosmosis was about 32 ATP. So if I had two molecules of glucose, how many molecules of ATP would I get? Ish. Okay. 
There we go. 60 ish, right? Any questions about anything we've done in cellular respiration? A hand or a stretch? It's neither. <laughs> okay. Yep, scribbling it out, not making it go away. So, sounds like a sign for an in-class activity. Okay. Let's make a study guide for this because, man, have we done a lot. Just because everyone's been curious, let's make sure we're using both terms then. Okay. So, get out a Microsoft Word document or a piece of paper. What we're going to do is create a super table. And we're going to take a couple minutes and without using your notes. Okay, so we're going to do our best to recall. Okay, for each of the five steps that we have done over the course of cellular respiration, okay, was it aerobic? In other words, did we use some kind of oxygen? Where in the cell were we? Okay. What was the material we started that step with? Okay. What did we get for electron carriers? If any. What did we get for net ATP? If any. All right, so some of these numbers may be zero. And what was the end product? So what was the end part of that step that we moved on to the next step with? So you'll see, and I'm leaving these in even though I'm not really talking about them, that your PowerPoints have a bunch of summary slides. Um, the intent in here is really for you guys. Um, so you have them as either study or summary tools. <clears throat> um, and we went over a lot of these questions as we went as well. So um, the oxygen and carbon dioxide and water, okay, where do these come from and where do they go? Right. So where do the oxygen and carbon dioxide go and come from? Where do they get going? Where does the oxygen come from? Outside, right? So we breathe that in. And where does the carbon dioxide and water go? Outside, right? You ventilate that back out. So this is why we're breathing. Okay, so um, we do want to spend a hot second on anaerobic respiration. So everything for the most part we've talked about up to this stage has made such a big deal about it being aerobic in one form or another in order to get where we got to. And we needed oxygen. We said this was important because that was very efficient, right? Two ATP here, two ATP there. Okay, but to get that big bad 30, we needed oxygen. We needed it at the end. We needed it most of <laughs> most of the stages along the way. But what happens if we don't have oxygen? Okay, so maybe we're some kind of bacteria that lives in an oxygen-free environment, or we're an organism okay, that is running low on oxygen. So what do we do? Okay, how do we cope and how do we continue to get ATP? Okay. Remember, the prefix am or a means without. You're rude. <clears throat> so aerobic was with oxygen. 
anaerobic is without oxygen. So there still needs to be some pathway here that we can use. Right, now that being said, all the stuff we spent all this time learning, this big five-step process, we can't do 95% of that, right? We needed oxygen to make carbon dioxide. We needed oxygen to make oxaloacetate. We definitely straight up needed oxygen for that electron transport chain because that's how we made water. So we can't do any of that. And so what can we do? And on your chart, there was one step that we didn't use any oxygen for, right? Glycolysis. Glycolysis does not care whether oxygen is there or not. And, bonus, okay, it does give you a net, you get <coughs> ATP out of the deal. A ton. Okay, but remember, two is better than zero for prep step. We'd be throwing shade. So, we call this anaerobic uh, respiration. We also call this fermentation. This is the same thing that makes like kimchi. So, we go through the process of getting those two ATP. Right, and then ultimately what happens is we don't want to build up a bunch of carbon dioxide in our body. We can't, right? Because we need oxygen to do that, right? So what do we do? Right, so we have to break down pyruvate in a different way that doesn't require turning pyruvate into acetyl-CoA. Remember when we did that, we had to have carbon dioxide. So we still need to break down pyruvate but without releasing carbon dioxide. <clears throat> so the way we do that is via fermentation. Okay. And that turns it into lactate or lactic acid. Lactic acid is that burning sensation you feel when you're running. And so when you first start out running, right, you're taking nice deep breaths, your muscles are really oxygenated, so you're going through aerobic respiration, everything's fine, everything's dandy. But the longer you run, okay, the harder time you are having getting that oxygen to all of your tissues and keeping those tissues energized. Okay, so you're breathing harder and harder, you're trying to breathe faster and faster and faster, okay, but eventually it's going to work out. Anyway. So your muscles are going to eventually need to switch over from aerobic to anaerobic respiration. You're going to try to keep them moving Okay, but you're not supplying them with enough oxygen to create the energy, the ATP, to keep them moving. Not for lack of trying. Okay. So as your muscles switch over to anaerobic respiration, okay, instead of A, creating a lot of energy, we're creating less energy. And this is partly why you slow down. It's hard to keep going. So you have less ATP in your cells. The other thing that's slowing you down is now you start building up this lactic acid in your muscles. It burns! And it takes a while for that lactic acid to get broken down further. So the burn goes away, right? That hangs out even when you're done running. And that's from that anaerobic. Happening. So all organisms usually at some point do anaerobic, even if their original source is aerobic. Right? It's like the backup plan. But 
any questions about this? Because this is literally all we're going to talk about for anaerobic respiration. Mm. So our key is here, right? We're stuck in glycolysis. We're getting way less ATP, right? two instead of 30 plus. And we need a process that isn't going to be using any oxygen. <clears throat> All right, any questions about anything cellular respiration that we have done over the last, uh, feels like a month, right? Once, twice, oh, Jasmine, will you stop and start me? Mm -hmm. 